90% of all sales teams have some kind of appointment setting system in place, whether in-house or outsourced, that is not known to them as appointment setting, but it actually is. If you can make appointment setting work for you specifically, it will bring more and better sales, less overhead costs, a predictable pipeline, and so much more. If you think about big names like Salesforce, Microsoft, or even Cisco, they all have appointment setting in place and it clearly works for them. Before we dive deep into the specifics of appointment setting, let's quickly recap the definition of it for those who are maybe new to this concept. Appointment setting is the process of scheduling a sales call or a meeting between a potential customer and your sales executive. This process can take place via email, phone, LinkedIn, or any other channel that allows proactive interest generation from buyers. The only difference between appointment setting and demand generation or business development is the result of the appointment setting approach is a booked appointment in your calendar. Whereas these other initiatives mostly focus on generating interest or engaging with new business. Appointment setting was formalized in the late twenties by Salesforce's outbound team, who was first able to hit a hundred million dollars in recurring revenue by having dedicated SDRs who focused on generating leads to their sales executives. They then converted these leads into deals. Today, this is a very well-known practice, but back then it was honestly a game changer. Today, every company in some shape or form is trying to establish a sales structure where they have a dedicated SDR team working solely on prospecting and generating leads. Some decided to outsource this effort as it was more cost-effective for them. Appointment setting was at its peak in 2014 to 2016, when an SDR could generate meetings with 25% of all leads in the pipeline. With years, this percentage went down to 15, 10, 5, and now in 2023, it can be as low as 1 to 3% from a lead to appointment. Because of this, many companies didn't find appointment setting effective in its performance and budget-wise. When we started Belkins in 2017 and during the next six years, we focused on implementing appointment setting programs to be cost-effective and generate consistent and predictable revenue. In the next 10 minutes, I'll explain and show examples of how appointment setting works and how to make it work well. The information to be shared is based on 1,000 successful projects that my team has run during the last six years. Here's a simplified scheme of an appointment setting process. It consists of four steps, leads to outreach, to engagement, to appointment setting. Hey, if you're still here and stayed through the introduction, let's dive into actual learnings. Let's talk about leads. A lot of companies will hire you and give you a list of unverified prospects and ask you to send hundreds of emails or make hundreds of calls in a day. Well, the thing is that that list that was given to you, was it actually checked? Were the emails verified for bounces? Are the prospects still at the current company you wish to contact? These are just a few of the many questions most sales reps disregard and simply start sending tons of emails per day. Before sending emails to every person on the planet, it's vital that you sit down with your team and come up with a specific detailed ICP. This ICP will act as your guide as to who you'll be targeting and who needs your offering most. Start off with a very specific ICP, but don't hesitate to expand your research if you see that your current ICP might not be exactly what you expected. Now that you have your ICP ready, let's talk about attaining leads. The first way is by using a service like Zoom Info, Apollo, Leadsforce, Lucia, or Seamless AI. With these vendors, you can choose what kind of leads you need and how many. The second way to attain leads is by manual lead generation. This includes hiring a leads researcher who through the help of many different tools and data scraping can generate leads. The difference between these two are quite drastic. Using services like Zoom Info and such are a good option if you need a large amount of leads within a very short time. Using a service like this though does have its own list of negatives, some of which are leads that are outdated, the data being old or incorrect. The leads might not actually be relevant to your needs and you can't get every specific piece of data that is sometimes needed. Hiring a leads researcher, however, gives you everything that these services can't. Some common mistakes when talking about leads, not A-B testing your ICP to see what works and what doesn't. Ignoring the fact that if you don't validate the emails of your prospects through a service like Zero Bounce, which ultimately leads your emails not going anywhere. Thinking that once you get a lead list, it will be valid forever, which isn't true. The life cycle of a lead list is actually around three months. Now, moving on to what to do with these leads. Before you invest in getting a lead list, it's important to decide whether you're planning on emailing, calling, connecting on LinkedIn, and then communicating back and forth, 
or utilizing any other outreach channel. What is the best method for appointment setting? So cold calling can be effective, yes, but it's very hard to scale. You can only physically call so many prospects in a day. Getting a prospect to pick up the phone is also another bottleneck. Last but not least, outsourcing with this channel is not easy because it's not possible to train an outsourced agent all the nuances of your product, internal processes, clients, etc. So you can't be sure that the person speaking on the phone with your client will be able to speak about your company on the highest level. Furthermore, you get your prospect on the phone and schedule a meeting right then and there. The no-show rate will be very high since prospects agree to the meeting without actual proper research, which by doing later, they might change their mind about the meeting. On the other hand, LinkedIn might be a channel to go to that works very well, but it takes time. Sending daily connection requests while posting consistent content can help you become somewhat of a thought leader amongst your network. One big setback though are the limits in place on LinkedIn for new connection requests sent. Currently, you can send 100 connections per week, which isn't ideal if your conversion is only 5 to 10% so that you can generate 10 to 15 new connections in a week, assuming that you can drive one to two meetings from them. Creating multiple profiles will get you banned. What's the alternative? The long-term value of LinkedIn outreach is that if you combine it with your email marketing, it will generate immediate value for your email channel and give LinkedIn the time to build up the momentum it needs. Sending an email and then sending a connection request so the prospect has the ability to put a face behind the email they're considering opening has proven to be effective. Also, LinkedIn is great for raising awareness, considering the content you put out has a high chance of winding up in your connections network feed as they like, comment, or engage with you. We have a video on how to use LinkedIn to generate leads, so be sure to check it out. The link is in the description box below. In comparison to all other channels, email marketing has a proven track record of being the most effective channel for appointment setting. The main thing to keep in mind when doing email marketing is spam. Spam is something that can kill your traction and you need to be on top of this. This leads me to my next point. I can't stress this enough, but you need to check your domain and mailbox health before you start your campaigns. Odds are that you might have a damaged sender score or you might even be in spam. Do me a favor and don't start off like this. Verify your domain and mailbox to guarantee that you are truly ready for a new campaign and that your emails will be landing in prospects' inboxes. To do this verification, you can use a service like Folderly, which offers you solutions to enhance your sender score and email deliverability, a set of technical procedures to improve and maintain domain reputation, and more. Check them out. Even with Folderly, your main domain can be flagged, and we don't want that, since it may affect your day-to-day -day operations. That's why another option that I personally recommend is setting up an additional domain and mailboxes specifically for your campaign so that your main business domain can remain intact. Back in 2015, 2016, you could send 100 emails and they would all end up in your prospects' inboxes. But now, it doesn't work that way. If you wanna be assured that your emails are truly going to your prospects' inboxes, set up dedicated domains, warm up your mailboxes, warm up your templates, remove spam words, track limits of daily sendouts, and do inbox maintenance. Also, make sure to also verify your mailbox settings are all correctly set up, like your SPF, DMARC, and DKIM. Important note, I mentioned warm up just a second ago. In case you've never heard of this, instead of sending hundreds of emails right off the bat, start with 10 per mailbox, and then start raising those limits by 10 or 20 each day. Do this until you get to around 150 or 200, and then stop raising your limits. If you're interested in learning more about email deliverability, be sure to check out our video on this. The link is also in the description box below. Okay, you have your leads, your mailboxes are ready to start sending, now let's talk templates. First things first, come up with a value proposition including things like how your offering overcomes common pain points, how you're different from your competitors, and anything else that provides value or insight. Take this value proposition and come up with your first set of templates. In general, it's good to keep your templates precise and short without the typical how are you formalities and with good numbers and statistics. While creating your templates, make sure you create a good sequence which consists of three to five emails. This may seem simple enough, but trust me, your templates need to be top notch, and A-B testing is something that should be used with both the subject lines and the templates themselves. Belkins, our company for example, has dedicated copywriters whose job is to create, measure, and A-B test the best outreach emails out there. 
There is a science behind this that needs to not be overlooked. Using a service like reply.io or outreach.io is recommended because not only can you easily set up and send sequences through them, they also offer tools and additional settings like message delay so that your emails go out to different prospects at different times. These services also allow you to clearly track open, reply, click-through rates, and much more. While we're on the topic of templates and sequences, I just recently reviewed 25 subject lines for a video, so be sure to check it out if you need great subject lines. You can find the link in the description box below. Okay, so you have leads, templates, and your mailbox is up and running. Now, who takes charge? A sales development representative. SDRs are considered to be junior sales positions because they don't actually close deals and they don't onboard or work with clients. As a result, this role becomes a stepping stone. And for many, it takes only 12 to 16 months to move from an SDR to a sales executive position. In my previous video about ROI, I spoke about the fact that it takes an SDR about 12 to 14 months to be fully ramped up. So when this transition happens, the whole cycle starts again and companies lose momentum, thus revenue potential. To summarize, SDR is a key role in the appointment setting process because an SDR is responsible for designing the outreach strategy, orchestrating outreach, A-B testing messaging, and later qualifying prospects and setting up calls. There is a science to working with objections, handling negative responses, getting to decision makers through gatekeepers, and actually setting up meetings with a 100% show rate. The success of appointment setting campaigns depends a lot on the lead qualification process that allows sales execs to have good sales closings. Without proper qualification, you might have a lot of meetings, but they'll go nowhere. The major mistakes companies do when setting up new appointment setting programs is they try to establish both strong traction and good qualification from the very beginning, which stops them from building a scalable channel. I recommend first building the entire appointment setting campaign from A to Z, polishing out your conversions, and then moving to the second qualification step. In this article, we speak in detail about different types of lead qualification for better sales closing rates. Be sure to save it for later reading. Companies like Belkin's were able to retain SDRs for four to five years because appointment setting is our business model. SDRs always have an inflow of different projects, focus on early and late stages of pipelines, and engage with various prospects from various industries, locations, or ICP segments, thus giving each SDR new challenges, goals, and opportunities to hone in their skills. This is one of the reasons why so many companies outsource SDRs with companies like Belkin's. Here, an SDR has more experience and playbooks to run appointment setting successfully. In my previous video, I compared toe-to-toe -to -toe in-house versus outsourcing SDRs. So be sure to check it out after this video. So now you have everything set up, the person or people to run everything, and hopefully new meetings coming in. But what about after everything really starts moving? What should you do if you get hiccups along the way? What if your campaign just isn't working? Subscribe to stay tuned for our next video on how we here at Belkins specifically run our appointment setting campaigns, our tips and tricks, and how we're able to deliver success to our clients.